Hi everyone, this is Gladson and Uncle Tony. Today we have an update video on V-Ray 6 features. Stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and huge thumbs up for my nephew for that intro. Now at this moment, V-Ray 6 is not available for SketchUp, but as you know, it's being released for 3ds Max with tons of new features. So in this video, I'll be reviewing some of these features so we can get familiar and know what to expect when it rolls into the SketchUp platform. Before we continue, if you could gently give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. This helps with the growth of the channel and so you don't miss the next time we drop a new video. I also like to take this time to thank you guys for helping us reach 20,000 subscribers. So first, let's start with Chaos Scatter. This feature was introduced in VOA 5 and it's a very intuitive and memory efficient distribution tool. Along with it, we also have Chaos Cosmos, which is a one-stop shop for all your free 3D assets. If you want to learn how to use both of these features, I'll have a link in the corner of the screen for a very quick tutorial. But if we look on the Chaos website, the keyword here is Scatter Preset. And if we follow the link, it will take us inside Chaos Cosmo for a new Scatter Preset category. Now, in my opinion, it doesn't get any easier than drag and drop presets. And we have two subcategories for surfaces and splines. For the spline feature, you can select a curve for the assets to follow along. And if you look at the surface presets, you will see items such as pebbles or gravels, grass, palm trees, and forest-like environments. So I would assume if you decide to load one of these into your scene, it will download all of these assets along with a scatter object modifier, which you can then apply to an object in your scene and adjust the parameters. Now, obviously, some of these presets may favor a platform like 3ds Max, but I don't see why we cannot have this in V-Ray for SketchUp. Next, we have V-Ray N-Mesh. This is a feature that lets you tile 3D geometry patterns across objects to create complex surfaces with great details. It says that N-Mesh is ideal for creating patterns, fences, and fabrics. And this feature also benefits from using less memory than displacement. And from the example on the screen, you can see the N-Mesh modifier being used to add this mesh pattern on the surface of this cloth object. And as a result, you achieve this incredible detail on its surface. And of course, there are settings that will help you adjust the size, the scale, and the height, so you can add some volume to the effect. And it looks really awesome on these close-up shots. So these are the sort of details I would expect from a modifier like this, such as pattern on metal surfaces, as well as these details we can see on wood furnitures. So this is something I would love to see, so we'll just have to wait until the official release for the viewer for SketchUp to know if this will be included or not. The next feature is V-Ray decals with displacement. So with this feature, you're able to use V-Ray decals to add displacements to any surface. So this would help you add more realistic details such as cracked walls, rocks, and embossed letterings. If you imagine how decals used to be projected, you will get a flat surface like this. So with this feature, you are able to go from something flat like this all the way into this. So this is a great feature, it really adds an extra layer of realism if decals is part of your workflow. And if you read the extra notes on this page, it says that decal presets are available in the Chaos Cosmo libraries with V-Ray 6. So it's not only an update in V-Ray features, but also significant updates in the Chaos Cosmo library. Next, we have Chaos Cloud Collaboration, which is a feature that lets you get rapid consolidated feedback on your work's progress. So what you are able to do is upload your renders into the Chaos Cloud Collaboration 
right from the V-Rays frame buffer. So once you upload your renders, you can then share with your work clients, team members, and other stakeholders where they can then review, mark up, and comment on the work. I really like features like this. It allows you to bring team members together to be able to discuss design solutions. And this helps rendering engine become more than just tools to create images. And it starts to help bridge the gap in the workplace environment. And if you head all the way to the bottom, you will see that cloud collaboration is free for all users with a Chaos account. So be sure to follow the links in the description so you can try this feature for yourself. The next feature is procedural clouds, which have been added to the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. Now with this, you can craft different sky environments with just a few clicks and easily simulate different weathering conditions. So this feature is a huge improvement to the existing Sun and Sky system where you can now get a little more creative so you don't always have to rely on HDRIs. Now from the previews, you can see that the clouds are very responsive to lights, shadows, and volumetric effects. And I imagine with the existing sky models, it will be very easy to create clear and partially cloud skies all the way to an overcast. Now from the preview, we can see some of the settings. You see parameters such as ground shadows, density, variety, and cyrus amount, as well as height and thickness. And you can see some of the examples of what these settings do. This is the example for density on a value of zero. And this is the density with a value of 0.8. Another example for the cloud's shadow on the ground. This is it turned off. And this is it turned on. Now this is a time-lapse animation of the procedural clouds, so my fingers are crossed that the VOA for SketchUp animations will improve in the near future. So the finite dome light is another feature that I'm really interested in. According to the notes, it adds depth to a scene's background and augments the lighting. So with this option, it enables the object to look as if it's placed in the scene. And we have a little example down here with the dome light in infinite and with the finite enabled. As you can see, the model looks to be more part of the HDRI background. So I'm assuming this adds some sort of scale properties to the HDRI so that your 3D models can feel a little more inclusive in the dome environment. Very interesting in my opinion, the dome light's primary use are for source of light. So this feature adds more to its functionality. So if you scroll down on this page, you'll be able to read more on other features. There is the thin film layer, this helps you to easily create iridescent materials such as soap bubbles, oil spills, and more. And to expand a little bit, those are surfaces that are able to change color based on the viewing angle. And you can see that on this example, if you focus on the glass, you can see that it has a very thin film of color. And of course, we can't forget about V-Ray Vision, which is a feature that's unique to V-Ray for SketchUp. It's been improving over the years, so I'm curious to what improvements we will see with V-Ray 6. So this is a summary video to help you get familiar with some of the V-Ray 6 features. So I'll have an official release video once it's released for SketchUp. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you can get more update videos like this. Don't forget to check the links in the description for on all of these features. Follow us on other social media platforms and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and subscribe. And I'll come back and I'll do more video next week at Uncle Tom. Thank you. Bye-bye.